Hello everyone and good morning yet again to my and welcome to my humble abode. At the end of the last episode I'd made a watermelon and it wasn't working and I wasn't sure why. And now I found out so I shall come and show you what happened. The problem was in the dynamo it has a particular direction and it must be that way round. Uh, so the inside with the yellow bit must be on the third and now we have a full hardened energy cell. And over here, this is a it's actually difficult to set up. You have to be doing it from the direction that you're facing. I don't think you can turn it around with the crescent hammer, but maybe we can have a look. Uh, I don't know. Maybe the ordinary engineer's hammer works. Let's have a look. Yes. This is the side that must be on the um, inside for the um, machine to work. That's the correct way around. And that was the. No, in fact, well, let me show you again because it wasn't too clear. This side here with the dot in is where the axis is, the bit where this here is where it needs to be. So that's the way it should be. Now, what I haven't done is didn't bring any. Did I bring wire with me today or did I forget that as well? Yes. Right, let's just quickly go back and get some wire. And there's one more floor down. And just in case, just in case, I'll get some wire and I'll get some connectors. I could get the cutters as well. It's not too important. So I don't think it actually drives two dynamos. In which case it's not too much of a trouble, all we have to do is to um, move the move the wire across to the actual one that I wanted it on. So let's take the motor on. And here we put on the top of this here. Uh, oops, I have to press connector. And then we have to connect this connector to this connector here, and this connector here, down to here. What we should see, if we've got this right, which still doesn't work, so what I shall do is I'll move the pole and bring the, the cable the other way around. So, to, and it's that uh, axe for the pole. And I also don't need this dynamo on here, but I'll leave it on, otherwise it won't work at all. So, what I shall do now is to remove this again. Shift right click with the crescent hammer is very good on those things. And let's put a pull here. The pull. What I do is I press 5 on the thing twice. Right. Now we need to connect a connector to the top of that. We need to go and connect the wires up. And this time, with a bit of luck, we see it going up. So now it's actually working. So it only seemed to work from one side. Now, of course, that also meant that the windmill I set up with both sides was wrong, so I changed it. So I put it on the orange facing side in both cases. And I also replaced the, uh, the norm old one for the improved windmill because I've got so much um, industrial hemp. Now, yeah. what we can also do is have a quick look at the, the, what I've done here as well. Here I've got uh, the harvester and the harvester is going out to this chest and I also put two butter barrels here so you can see that it's actually already got up to 20 stacks nearly 21 stacks of industrial hemp it does take quite a few industrial hemp for that to work properly and here we're just getting the hemp seeds which means that the the that the um, 
planters are already full of seeds. Let's go and have a quick look at that. And on this filter here, I've got a blacklist of the items I don't want to go in. So I don't want cotton or industrial hemp fiber to go in there. So they're going across here, as you see. And in the planter itself, you see it's completely full of industrial hemp except for a few cotton seeds. And here in the harvest, in the harvest, in the fertilizer, I've actually got nothing. I put three fertilizers in. And what we can do at the same time is go and have a look how my what I was sitting at previously was a, a sewer, wasn't I? Well, I've finished doing the tunneling for that now, and that's down here. And I've put on the ground here some uh, rough brownstone, so when I walk, I run. And here we have an energy cell actually just an energy cell and here we have sewage going into this composter here the composters got plenty of energy and it's nearly work to work and in here we end up with industrial fertilizer that we can use for the for the farm and the fertilizer upstairs and I carried on this and that goes to the, the, the sheep and here I just made a, a, a passage into the um, back into the home actually it comes out on the ground floor the first floor this is the one with the uh, the tesseract from the from the quarry and the quarry is, quarry is now finished and I'll have to go and either build a new one and what I put in here was the wireless charger I moved it down the floor and what I want to do is go upstairs don't I because what I would like to do today is to make a steel scythe now you can get I've got refined iron here and I've got steel and when these two smelt they actually smelt the molten steel but the first thing I'm going to do is to create another mining hammer because I really like these mining hammers what I've done so far let's go to my chest here and hopefully we've got plenty of paper we have take it all because what I need are these paper tough bindings and I want the pattern chest here so we shall make some more tough bindings here I made 12 that we do just fine put that paper back so what I'm going to do now is to assemble another uh, hammer. This time I'm going to just change some of the materials on the handle. So we've got slime, steel, which you can see says reinforced two, cobalt reinforced three, and manilium it doesn't say reinforced, so it says durability modified times 1.25. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the hammer which of course is, ah, the wrong one. It wasn't tough tool bandits, it was tough face plates. That's what I needed. I don't think I have enough paper for those. Do I have any tough face plates here? No, just some stone ones. All right, quick trip outside and some harvest some paper. dug a penny this time right so we've got plenty of materials for paper now let's just make lots of paper I know it's quite a few that you need for the uh, for the face plate so they take up a lot of paper actually again right now we go to the pattern table let's put some paper on there and we want the faceplate pattern to for us let me get out of this Oop, wrong one 
six. It does take a lot of paper to make these things. But six is plenty for what I want to do today. So let's put the paper back up here. And we can also put the sugar cane up there as well. We didn't have enough for exactly enough. Right. So back to the hammer. So we need I'm going to use my lilium again for the for the hammer head. I'm going to use paper again for this. And now what I think I'm going to do is to use cobalt. Let's just see. Here we have a mining speed of 1.73. When I read the, the the book about cobalt, it says it's got a 40 modifier. Ah, so the mining speed is still 1.73. Okay, still, still 1.73. So it doesn't affect the mining speed at all. Maybe I would have to produce a. Oh, I'll try something else. Let's produce a not a manilium hammerhead. Let's produce a cobalt hammerhead. I think that the material cost is reasonably high. Let's have a look. Let's take this out of here. Cobalt is this one. This blue this looks as though I eh, maybe I have enough. Not to have to smelt some more, which I'm planning to do anyway. So put this behind this faucet here. I've got it to right. I have that on number five, I think. Put let's put the hammerhead. Go and get the hammerhead mold cast. If I'm going to be using the correct terms, which I really do. Just enough. That was a bit close. Anyway, what we're going to do is I'm also going to put that down there. Take this away. What I need to do actually is to make some some more um, uh, co liquid cobalt. So let's do that as well. While I'm here, let's put. Where's my bucket? Where's it gone? Let's put that into number five. Put that here and let's put the. Um, more cast back into, into the chest. Now, if you remember, turn off my jetpack. If you remember, the best way to make cobalt is by using the induction smelter with cinnabar. So well, let's have a look. So here I've got eight uh, cinnabar, and that's the thermal foundation kind, and f and four cobalt. Now it'll give me twelve ingots of cobalt and four ingots of iron. While that's doing that, let's go back upstairs again. And let's do the sour look. I put into here steel, didn't I? So if we now look at this. So now, even though I use refined iron and I put nine ingots of refined iron and eight ingots of steel, I get 17 ingots of molten steel. So what I shall now do is, here's my tank that has a little bit of molten steel in. Let's go and get it. Actually, I'll take this one out of here now. I don't need that. Oh, actually, I can put the molten steel just as easily here. And that will take us. Seven, nearly finished. Finished, good. Let's pick up that. Let's put that here again behind the faucet and fill up this side. I think this is about eight ingots here. I could use my lilium or cobalt, but I think for what I need, it's just, I think this is perfectly adequate steel. It's a relatively cheap material, just coal and iron. Let's have a look. So we're now steel side head now. And let's put the molten steel back onto the wall. And it goes here, doesn't it? Now, let's go back again down to the workshop and just check how that uh, cobalt's doing, because I also would like to do some hardite as well. 
yes that's finished nicely and here's the four R dates which will match up here in fact I'll take the elevator and put the cobalt into the, into the smeltery I don't want this to, to mix so let's take the scythe head out of there put it into the chest I think that was the only one I've got look at yes. because I'm not made a scythe before you're supposed to be able to kill mobs in three in uh, three by three squares so if you get into a place where lots of mobs are it might be a very useful weapon so let's see and have a look what do we need for the scythe here's the recipe so two face plates oh no sorry two tough rods and one steel so let's see what happens if I try doing that one so what does it say so it gives me a mining speed of 10 attack damage of 3 hearts with slam same here cobalt C it's the level of um, mining which is very deep I think the only thing that's changing here is the um, durability yes okay really care about the durability that much because I'll stick a modifier on it to re re repair itself so it'll do just fine. Now let's go back to the hammer and if you remember rightly when I used Manilium it gave me a, let's have a look, let's stick on here a Manilium handle. So now I have a mining speed of 2.4, level this cobalt which is as deep, as deep as you ever need to go, I think. Attack is 1.5 and modifiers remaining is 1.5. Durability. So if I then change that for that, this time the mining speed goes down because the mining speed of cobalt, according to the book, I shall have a quick look at the book. Have a look. Oh, wrong way, try that again. What it says here for, for materials. See so here it says the mining speed. So the one with the fastest mining speed that I found so far was only map was very good. Cobalt had a mining speed of 14, and there's really the nearest one was Ardite in comparison to that. Oh, and Millennium had nine, so Millennium was also very good. So, the reason I wanted to make another hammer is I'm finding that my hammer's actually running out fairly quickly. This look, this looks okay. And what I wanted to do, when I say running out, I mean it runs out of durability quite quickly. I'm just, I'm just wondering if this resonant flux capacitor can be applied to it as a modifier. Let's just see. Has it gone to? No, it doesn't work. I, it only has to be the lead same one. Okay. It was just an experiment. I know what you can do with this resonant one though to improve things is to keep it in your hot bar and turn it on or activate it. Where's that hammer? I don't need that. What I will do is I'll put some moss on the uh, steel side and it will self repair itself. So, what you can do here. That out of there, don't need that to them. If I press, it's a bit like the magnet. If I press, I think a shift right click, it activates it, and anything that's in your hotbar will get charged up. So that means that when I'm using the uh, the, uh, the hammer, it'll charge it up as it's using up, which will be great because that means it'll last a bit longer. Because at the moment, it doesn't last very long. This one here. So, I mean, what would be more sensible is to put some of these things up here and put let's go and put that downstairs and put that in the hot bar here oh 
looks like a good combination. Let's get rid of some of the things we don't need. And we don't need the scythe head, but we can throw it away. Four ingots of iron, very good. Leave this up here as a part. We've got some more parts here, so it's just what we've been playing with. And we'll put this one up here. Right. In fact, I probably can throw away these stone. Because they're probably fairly useless. What's the best place to do that? Is in the um, in the chest down here. And those then get fed into the recycler here. I could have put them straight into the hopper, of course. And if anything gets produced, any sl any slag um, scrap, it'll go down in here, and it'll help produce some more urea matter. It's only activated when there's uh, an accelerator in there. What I didn't show you in the previous episode is I had, for some reason, I found um, a rubber sapling. And it wasn't just an ordinary rubber sapling, it was a mega rubber sapling. Let me just get rid of this book I've got in here as well. Put him back again so we know where he is for next time. And. I planted this rubber sapling in the in the multi farm and let it grow in a huge tree, and then when I cut it down because it was taking a pull to the farm, it gave me sixty nine almost seventy sacks of rubber, and forty nearly forty stacks of rubber trees, which is phenomenal. It was a huge tree, really big, as big as the one you can see in the distance here, wherever it is. Turn that. that. Oops. These trees over here, these are massive trees as well, I think. Where's it gone to? There. It was almost as big as this tree here. And, you can, and it was 127 blocks high, I did actually measure it. So how high is this one? In fact, this could even be a rubber sapling, a mega rubber tree as well. Hundred and twenty four. And it is indeed a rubber tree. So that's what a mega rubber tree looks like. It is massive. And if I drop it down I won't get actually any more mega rubber saplings, well saplings, I'll get some lots of saplings for rubber trees, but not mega rubber saplings. Okay. Well I hope you enjoyed this episode and until next time. Bye for now. <laughs>